Okay, um, thank you everyone for coming, and I'd like to thank the GLF for allowing us to launch uh, this alliance and welcome you all to this Launchpad event. Um, I would also like to thank our speakers, His Excellency uh, Alex Norden, Governor of South Sumatra, um, His Excellency uh, the Dr. Hadi Darianto, a DG of Social Forestry and Environment Partnership from the Indonesian Ministry of Environment mm. and Forestry, Ms. Ida Greenbury, uh, Managing Director of Sustainability and Stakeholder Engagement for Asia Pulp and Paper, um, Mr. Uh, Fitrian uh, Ardin Shah, the Country Director of IDH, uh, Mr. Dato, National Coordinator, Indonesian Palm Oil Smallholders Union, and Anjar Rafi Anstanto, Country Manager of ZSL Indonesia. This initiative that, we, that our guests will be kindly speaking about uh, represents an opportunity for a truly integrated people-public-private partnership involving critical government, corporate, as well as community stakeholders. With commitment and inspiration from the governor, combined with the technical expertise and corporate commitment that this corporate consortium represents, a true jurisdictional landscape-based green growth partnership in South Sumatra. The hope this project will create a model for, that will develop inclusive economic growth, community prosperity, biodiversity conservation, and forest protection. And if I'd like to welcome the first speaker, His Excellency, if you would like to take the floor. Or Alex. Uh, okay. <laughs> Thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Excellency Governor of South Sumatra, Mr. Alex Nordin. Uh, good morning, yeah. or oh, good afternoon, already. Uh, I would like to introduce myself as DG of Forest, uh, Social Forestry and Partnership. What, what, what I would like to share with you about the, where's the, the role of the social forestry in terms of the, what we call uh, 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 landscape management with which will be done by the, uh, the, the, the one of enterprise in Indonesia. Let's say first I would like to, to, to share with you the principle for the social forestry. Yeah? There's two principles or maybe three principles, which is first principle is people organize themselves by their necessity. And the second principle is it is a labor intensive. And the trust the government recognize those people who willing to manage or who to manage the forest or willing to be partner of the concessionaire or willing to be partner of the forest management unit in the state forest. For example, linked to this uh, landscape. Uh, Proposed, let's get better proposed by this, uh, by this uh, business. What we, what, what, what we would like to see here this afternoon will be launched by Madam Aida. Uh, the key success to do so is, first, of course, uh, uh, first is have to be clear the tenorial aspect. Tenorial aspect. It is linked to the president, president uh, Jokowi Nawacita, but already, already introduced by SBY administration in, 19, uh, in 2007, after the Hernando presidential course, he asked to the minister Kaban about soft about the reform, agrarian, agrarian reform in forestry sector. And then we introduce the soft reform uh, uh, 
agrar reform in 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 forestry sector is give the legal access to the local people for managing a small scale forest state on such community forest in Indonesia language hutan kemasyarakatan village forest or plantation smallholder forest it is an legal access for the local people for combating or for poverty alleviation creating job and also improve the quality of environment Uh, the 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 implementation of this uh, government regulation to give the legal aspect access to the local people is so slow. So until the end of the, uh, the, the 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 end of the the, the 2014, we deliver around 800,000 hectare for those permit for uh, community forest management, uh, small scale plantation forest and, and, and uh, village forest. Then when Pak Jokowi uh, have a plan in uh, he, he has a nine goal, what we call Indonesia Nawacita and also uh, mentioned in um, Midterm National Development Plan 2015-2019, we allocate around 12.7 million hectare. Yeah. Next, the 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 slide. Oh, sorry, it is one. Where's the area for 12.7 hectare? It may also close to the concessioner, close to the uh, national park. Either also is possible in in the uh, the conservation area. We make a criteria. The first criteria is where's the production area already allocated, what we call non-productive area for business for economic development. I still remember Mr. Agus Pornomo where we make a LOE with with Norway. It is the second the second article the first article is suspending concession uh, what we call a moratorium and the second is provide data for economic development what no at the moment we have 20 23 million hectare of the open access in production for us and we allocate either for social forestry around 4 million hectare or for restoration ecosystem around 11 million hectare, if I'm not mistaken, and other concessioner. So it is, is under DG of forest utilization. In Indonesia, we have three DG who deal with the allocation. First is DG Planologi for moratorium, 63 million hectare, and DG forest utilization around 20th and me for 12.7 million hectare. The second criteria is land forest climb by the customary people and in in here they say as uh, indigenous people we are indigenous but in terminology indigenous is mean according to our law is masyarakat hukum adat around 5.7 million hectare uh, in this 5.7 million hectare they already uh, mapping by parsis participatory JKPP is participatory mapping network is clear already 719,000 uh, hectare and also by uh, uh, social forestry network 1.3 million the rest is 3.5 million is still claimed by the uh, AMAN AMAN is Alliance uh, Indigenous and Nusantara Alliance Indigenous People the criteria four is, uh, sorry, uh, the criteria uh, five, it is linked to the Torah. Torah is agrarian reform, object land, yeah, under the Ministry of 
village and transmigration. This exclude because the land is this this forest land is already under 30 percent. It's impossible to be delivered to deliver to the people for reform agraria reform around 176,000 hectare and the area already in pipeline for deliver to the people the key six around two million six hectare already in pipeline to deliver as uh, social forestry for the sociality program and the rest is key seven is the uh, for the partnership yes of course then it is the land the allocation the 2.7 you can look in South Sumatra <coughs> Yeah, there. Yeah. Around uh, mostly in 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 Rio, Central Kalimantan and West Kalimantan. To make it sure, we have make uh, online, online uh, services, and you can see the map through this uh, website. Yeah. Uh, you can use the gadget either the tablet. I think it is what I have to say from my set. I thank you. Thank you very much, Pat, for explaining quite clearly the role and the size of social forestry and how that can impact on a, a landscape, an integrated landscape management. Um, the next speaker that we're inviting to speak is Pat Alex. The Lost, okay. Um, okay, all right. Um, so, if I'd like to welcome um, Miss Greenbury to come up and speak. Thanks, Laura. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, the launch today is the uh, culmination of. Uh, a huge amount of work that we all have done by the governor, by ZSL, IDH, and uh, others. We have sat in so many different conversations, different meetings, conf conference calls, thousands of emails to make today happen. So I'm very relieved and proud that we are here today with you. As you may know, in February 2013, uh, my company, Asia Pulp and Paper Group, made the decision to transform our business model from previous reliance on natural forest to sourcing 100% of our fiber from renewable plantation wood. Our commitments are enshrined in our forest conservation policy. That's how it all started. I had always hoped that our forest conservation policy would provide us with a platform to support initiatives like the one we are launching today, and I'm very pleased that APP has played a role in making this happen. In the last three years, we have learned that simply halting natural forest clearance is not enough. We must do more to actively protect the landscape. Conservation efforts cannot be limited to administrative boundaries and will only succeed if the sustainability of the whole landscape is taken into account. And all the stakeholders within the landscape, inside and outside of our concessions, work together toward the same goal like what we witnessed today. APP has experience playing the role as the catalyst and as the private sector partner in such a multi-stakeholder initiatives, specifically alongside the Norwegian government and a landscape approach to conserving and restoring forests in South Sumatra. It's an initiative led and driven by the governor of South Sumatra, Mr. Alex, who is here today with us. The landscape approach we have developed in the, in the area is very unique and also multifunctional. Today, APP is uh, formally submitting this commitment, our landscape approach commitment, also for inclusion as part of the bond challenge, the first private sector company to make this pledge. To support our South Sumatra uh, um, uh, landscape approach, we pledge to bond challenge to first transparently use multi-stakeholders approach and the best experts in the field to create our restoration plans across and surrounding our supply chains operations. Secondly, to work with the Indonesian government 
on restoration activities, and finally to invest $10 million a year of in-kind and financial support to coordinate and channel investment to fund landscape forest restoration and conservation across Indonesia. This is in, this is in addition to the community-based agroforestry program that we launched at the COP Indonesian Pavilion earlier this week. I hope that Asia Pulp and Paper's contribution can be a model for actors in the region to consider what contribution to make to forest restoration across forest countries. I am proud of what we are doing, uh, but would take more pride when we are part of even wider movement of companies actively involved in tackling this issue. Thank you very much and congratulations to Pa Alex. Thank you very much. Um, I'd now like to welcome uh, Fitrian to the to the stage, or are you going to you going to do this one here? Okay, um, to discuss the role, the wider role of industry in an integrated landscape approach. Thank you so much, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, first of all, I uh, would like to ask permission to speak on this uh, chair, uh, Honourable Governor Alex Nordin, uh, the DG of uh, Social Forestry and Environmental Partnership, uh, uh, Hadi Darianto. Aida, uh, Dato, and also Anjer. Um, I think this is a very uh, good time for us to um, have uh, this uh, type of launching because uh, it's a dire need for Indonesia to have public-private people partnerships uh, for not only landscape but also to show that things that we have uh, committed as a pledge can be translated on the ground. In the context of IDH, we realize, we do realize that whatever things that we try to push uh, in the context of sustainable commodities throughout the supply chain is, is not sufficient. Uh, sectoral improvement uh, is only a starting point uh, when it comes to sourcing areas, when it comes to the landscape, you need uh, a little bit different coordinations and collaborations. Uh, industries implementations uh, uh, and needs to coordinate to or collaborate to other uh, land use players needs to coordinate to uh, with um, uh, oil palm concessions, for instance, and they also uh, together need to work together with uh, local communities, villagers, to address key challenging uh, issues, uh, including how to address and prevent fires, how to address and manage pit and water table, uh, how to address and 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 manage uh, uh, forests, uh, the remaining forests, so it can be not only protected but sustainably managed. Uh, to uh, first improve productivity of the landscape, as well as uh, to protect uh, this nature capital for uh, this current generation and in the future. So IDH in that context uh, uh, would like to congratulate uh, the leadership of uh, Pa Alex Nurdin, the governor of South Sumatra. We are committed also to help and support. We have already signed an MOU with him uh, in Utrecht a couple of days ago. And we are uh, not, not only happy, but we are really, really encouraged to see not only the governor, but with his leadership and also with the support of the national government, uh, working together with the private sector, uh, especially to address very challenging and almost impossible uh, e e you know, uh, problems or issues, uh, including how to address legality of the land of smallholders, uh, capacity and knowledge of, of local people, as well as you know, the issues that we, ha uh, we are uh, I mean, facing currently in terms of fires and also peat and forest. So with that, uh, I would love to say that uh, us, IDH, uh, uh, not only going to be here for the launching, but also going to be there on the ground uh, to support the governor and also other uh, stakeholders. Uh, because I think we need a, a very good collaboration, a package of comprehensive uh, solutions uh, uh, from different stakeholders, including the incentives created at landscape level. So thank you so much, and uh, we are committed to support and also to collaborate with others. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Fitrian. And I'd like to welcome uh, Dato to speak on behalf of the Indonesia uh, Palm Oil Smallholders Union. OK. Uh, OK, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I want to uh, give uh, some point uh, from me uh, about uh, this is initiative, uh, landscape uh, approach. And thank you very much for uh, Pa Alex Nordin for uh, announce 
uh, landscape approach in South Sumatra and uh, sp specifically for uh, smallholders on palm oil. My points for me, uh, from me uh, about the land mapping, uh, land mapping for smallholders to understanding to understand about the problem in the ground, such as uh, legality aspect uh, of independent smallholders in South Sumatra. And second point, uh, establish the smallholders organization, such, such as uh, cooperative, because uh, independent smallholders, they don't have organization. They, they uh, skaters uh, and, and uh, different with uh, plasma smallholders. Uh, plasma smallholders uh, organized by, by, by company. And uh, this is situation different with uh, smallholders, uh, with independent smallholders. After that, um, capacity building uh, for farmers, uh, for smallholders, uh, to increase the productivity about the good agriculture practice. And I think uh, Pa Alex Nordin uh, and uh, national governments can provide about the fertilizers uh, for uh, smallholders, fertilizer, seedling, and uh, material uh, planting for smallholders. And last point, uh, put fair partnership principle, uh, such as uh, free prior informed consent, transparent accountability, equality, and respect for human rights to avoid uh, social conflict in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dato. Um, I'd like to now welcome uh, Anjar to speak about the ZSL Integrated Landscape Project that is working with all the partners to support Pat Alex in his um, Integrated Landscape Management eco-region approach. Uh, thank you. First of all, I would like to thank uh, His Excellency, the Governor of South Sumatra, Pat Alex Nurin, and then also Pat uh, Adi Darianto, the DG of uh, Social Forestry and Environmental Partnership, to sitting together here and to launch uh, the initiative, the new initiative uh, for South Sumatra Ecoregion Alliance. So this is very, very uh, good opportunity to launch the activity that uh, soon we, we need to, to do it in the ground level. So JTSL will, our role is to lead the partnership in the fit level so we would like to work together with with the government and then uh, private sector and also the community so we have uh, three approaches on this uh, initiative one is uh, the government jurisdictional policy which is very important to see to piloting the activity in the ground level and then uh, public private people partnership this is the key point that we, we always try to, to, to do it on the ground. And then a uh, system of monitoring. This is also very important uh, to do, to see, uh, to roll out the activity in, in the provincial level. So all of the three, we try to do it for the sustainable landscape management in the near future. So we're working on, actually working on the five component, important component. First, we, we, we want to try to develop some biophysical data baseline information that now is lacking. So we, we're not only working on, on, on the biodiversity aspect, but also for the physical aspect like pit area, because South Sumatra is covered by, by pit area that, that currently suffering from the, the fire. So we also, it is also important that we try to identify the area that's very important for biodiversity because South Sumatra still holds uh, richness of biodiversity in that area. And then the second component, we will try with the government on the regulation thing. And then a uh, third component, we, we, we try to working together with, with private sector, 
like APP here, there is AIDA that already already in the consortium, and also we try to engage with the oil palm sector to working together in the landscape le level. And then in component four, we, we were working with the local community, with smallholder, like Pak Darto mentioned before, that we, we try to develop some partnership in the fit level for smallholder. And then the, the last one, we try to scale up our activity in first in the provincial level and then we try to link it up to the national level policy. So we are really happy here because uh, Pak Adi Darianto is also here. I think this is all from JTSL that uh, we just expecting that we will working uh, soon. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. So, um, each of our panellists has presented um, uh, how they're going to work together towards this integrated approach, um, both through their own projects and also in an integrated way to ensure that those projects are aligned. And those projects have been aligned to support um, Pat Alex in his commitment with the Eco Region Alliance. And I'd like to introduce Pat Alex now. Very good afternoon to all of us. I have uh, very proud to be here, far away from our region, South Sumatra. My name is Alex Nudin from South Sumatra. South Sumatra is only one of 34 provinces in Indonesia. But uh, during the last four months, we are suffering uh, because of fires and his. So, uh, I have to take, as a governor, to take responsibilities of all of this and to make a commitment, a strong commitment, never again for tomorrow. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have a commitment to support partnership in eco-region landscape. Sustainable landscape partnership with other friends. As a representative of central government, we also have the guidance from central government, Pahadi, and I also make a, a consolidation with our partners, private people and public. Partnership P4. So I cannot work alone. We need support from other uh, parties. But as a leader in local regions, it's very important uh, things because what happened in everything happened in regions, in province, it's my responsibility. I'm not hiding from everyone's. I have to face the, what is the, the, the questions. I have to ask all the questions about the fire and the haze. So for future, we have the very ambitious program, Sustainable Landscapes. Sustainable Landscape to ensure fire prevention action for high risk area. In other hand, help uh, the smallholders, uh, farmers with replanting, provide a good seed, provide the training, provide everything they need with the help from the big and small plantation in my province. So, we would like to be a pilot project here. We are the first in Indonesia to take these actions. We are not only talk and talk, but action Action in field, action in the regions, together with all the stakeholders. 
We want to develop legal and policy tools. So we evaluate all the license, review license, we make a law enforcement. The good will be have uh, awards, but the bad will be have the sanctions. So that's my promise to next year. Once again, we support local livelihood, free education since 2008, free medical care to every people in South Sumatra. Free medical care for all the people, 8.4 million people. And since last August, free education until university. We also first in Indonesia. Maybe Pak Hadi belum tahu. Ya Pak, sekolah gratis, berobat gratis. Uh, and also, we are the host for the Asian Games, the next Asian Games in 2018. Only two cities, Jakarta and Palembang, the capital of South Sumatra. Jakarta because of Jakarta is the capital of Republic of Indonesia, but uh, Palembang because of his spirits, experiences, his contribution uh, for the development of sport in Indonesia. So we very proud of our province. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to convene and lead cooperation with multi-stakeholders bodies. So I have to have a very strong leadership. Very strong leadership. So how? to make this better coordination, to make this, uh, this, 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 this uh, multi-stakeholders can be uh, working together? The answer is the common interest. The common interest, the same interest between the governments, the plantation uh, companies, smallholder, what else? The government won't uh, make uh, this province uh, uh, sustainable landscape. The companies want to be increase their productivity in such sustainable way. The smallholder farmers needs uh, legality with his land, better seeds better training, and also fun. So, once again, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is not, this is not, not easy, not easy. But once again, we not only talk and talk, but action. So, I promise next year will be better for my province, and my province will be the pilot project for other provinces. I am very proud to be to launch today in this room uh, the landscape partnership with other uh, partner in South Sumatra. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Pat Alex. Um, I, we've got, uh, due to the running of the sessions, we've only got um, five minutes for questions. So I would ask that we probably limit it to three questions. So if, if anyone has any questions, if you would. Yes. Uh, hello, my name is Emmy. I'm from Warsi, uh, one NGO who works in Jambi, Sumatra. Uh, just slightly to the point, my, my question is for Pa Alex. Uh, how to maintain the commitment, the 
to have a collaboration between private, public, and partnership. And then there's an issue in Indonesia. If we change the leader, and it seems that sometimes the commitments cannot be, uh, what is it, uh, cannot be applied because of the changes of the leader. That's the first question. And the second question for Pa Hadi, uh, Indonesia has a very, uh, what is it, fantastic number for the achieving uh, social forestry. In this year, is around 12.7 million hectare. Uh, based on our experience five years before, the achievement of social forestry is still low. So what is the key strategies to achieve the 12.7 million hectare for social forestry? Thank you. And also the third one question for the company itself, why in South Sumatra, this project, why not in Jambi or the other province? Because APP also in Jambi, right? Thank you. Okay, that was three in one. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> that was that was very impressive. <laughs> okay, we do, as we've got a very short amount of time, I would ask that um, the responses are a bit brief, but um, there would be an opportunity to talk afterwards as well. So, Alec, if you'd just like to um, respond very briefly about what happens next um, after the transition after your term. Thank you, Bu Emi. Kita baru ketemu pertama kali ini ya. Please come to Palembang, be my guest. Uh, how to make commitments? Uh, the, the most important thing is <coughs> how to make the, the, the common interest. Kepentingan bersama, Bu. It's, we have the common interest. Everything we, uh, we goes very well. And uh, the commitment if we change the leader commitment will be changed also but we develop not only commitment but a system if there is a system will be sustainable thank you uh, say hello to our friends governor of Jambi <laughs> And then the second question to me, how big, yeah? 12.7 million hectare, of course, is very big. And President Jokowi also mentioned to Ibu Menteri, and how to make safe and uh, effective delivery. Yes, of course, first we have to see the regulation the policy. In the, in the meantime, here today, we still have uh, government regulation number six that, for example, for community forest and uh, plantation, small scale plantation will be delivered by, the permit will be delivered by the region. <coughs> According our experience, if the region, uh, let's say more politically, yeah, not, uh, is frankly speaking, if the people not their success team, but they cannot deliver, <laughs> They keep, even the minister already mentioned the name of the, uh, the farmer to be receive the, 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 the permit. And second, also link the capacity of the, uh, let's say our, our technical uh, unit in the field. To do so, we would like to revise this uh, government regulation number six. And and now we create also the civil society to be our partner. So to make it sure the deliver we have already not 12 percent, 7 billion hectare, all is at the community. There's only 6,000 community. So it's not much, around 2,000 million, uh, 2 million hectare, which is 2,400 uh, contact person in the feed. <coughs> so for us, it's not the big as soon as possible, uh, as soon as to be delivered, but how to make it safe and effective. So we create uh, 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 what we call task force in, in every province, consists in the, 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 the people who work together with us as NGOs people, and we make it. Uh, uh, online uh, services. We are still 
need the the the, the, the what we call the recommendation from the civil society itself. And then for uh, a, a customary rights, as I, m I mentioned in the, the, the figure around 3.5 million hectares is just the claim. The difficulty is how to make like Pak Alex, maybe it's good uh, governor or region, the, the other region to, to facilitate the local regulation, what they call peraturan daerah, because to deliver to the uh, customary people, if they are no uh, <coughs> perda, yeah, if they are no local regulation, it cannot deliver, it is also a handicap. Even the uh, uh, supreme uh, constituent already mentioned that the land, customer land is a uh, Onset of the state land. It is the challenge for us. Yeah. Okay, thank, thank you, you very much. I'm um, very much putting the onus on the province, and uh, I now hand over to uh, Ida to explain why she decided on the province of South Sumatra. Uh, thank you, Ibuemi. It's good to see you in Paris instead of Jambi, but uh, let's catch up in Jambi soon. Uh, why South Sumatra? This is, uh, this is just a, a natural involvement of our existing programs because we already have several programs with the uh, with ZSL and also IDH and, and others uh, Delta S and, and others and in South Sumatra so with uh, this program has been ongoing for quite some time so I think it would be good to use that as a pilot uh, for the for the province but uh, but don't worry, um, because uh, uh, our commitment is addressing uh, issues in 10 different landscapes and Jambi, especially at uh, uh, Bukit, Bukit Tiga Puluh landscape, is part of it. And hopefully we can work further with Warsi uh, to address the issues in, in Bukit Tiga Puluh landscape. And uh, uh, that is to support that. That's why we also launched our uh, 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 Belantara Foundation today to start channeling the funding that we're going to uh, allocate to support this landscape restoration program. As I said earlier, it's a $10 million uh, for 10 different landscapes uh, to support the restoration program in 10 different landscapes, including Jambi pro uh, province. And today we are soft launching the uh, Belantara Foundation to support, to support that uh, effort. Thank you. Okay, unfortunately we're very short of time, so we have <laughs> One more question for someone who has one question. <laughs> okay, at the back, yeah, thank you. Faisal Parish Global Environment Center. We all know that the El Nino event has caused great uh, stress and problems in uh, South Sumatra uh, in the last few months, but it's still predicted to strengthen up till June next year. So what steps are the provincial government and private sector taking to make sure we don't have a repeat of the massive fires uh, and emissions <coughs> in South Sumatra that we've had in the last few months. Thank you. Yeah, uh, we already have a grand master plan to face the El Nino next year. Will be held again <laughs> El Nino on June. Yes, you right. Uh, we make uh we have the, the 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 answer like this if only 220 not only 220 uh, thousand hectares was burned but in the other hands one million two hundred sixty thousand hectares saved if we can find the answers this burn and why this not we can find a solution so the solution is we have to make the uh, the, the the grand master plan water management system to keep the water still high even in the uh, hot season to levating the pit lands Ladies and gentlemen, this is a very difficult to extinguish if the pit land was burned. Whatever we do it, water bombing, uh, what is hujan buatan, Pak? Artificial rain, and uh, also from ground, it's impossible to extinguish the fire because the fire is still in the below. So, 
the the solution starting this january we make the the whole system for the our peatlands i would like to tell you not the forest was burned but peatland in south sumatra water management system for the whole peatland we starting this uh, in january on january next year uh, by helping by, by from app czl idh and other uh, fans thank you okay thank you very much and i think uh, that answers the question for everybody in the management of peatlands and fire prevention because it, everyone will be working under the umbrella of uh, pat alex's initiative i'd like yes um yeah uh, just to to announce so uh, i think there are so many questions that uh, haven't been answered tomorrow we will have sessions at cop 21 in Russia pavilion at 9 to 10 30 uh, the honorable governor will be there so any questions that haven't been answered now, please come to the, the session tom tomorrow. We will provide also traditional food from Palembang. Uh, okay, um, we just have one short announcement. Um, yeah. Uh, thank you, Laura. We, we will have a soft launch, launching on Blantara, so we, I would like to call Payatna to, to come in the state to have a speech, probably two, three words, to launching the Blantara Foundation. But Payatna is the vice chairman of Blantara. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, Pak Governor, uh, <laughs> Pak Hadi Darianto, and many other uh, honorable and uh, fellow of the Congress. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to launch this really good cause, uh, one of the very, very new of the foundation. They call the Yayasan Belantara, the Belantara Foundation. It is uh, very important to have it, especially when um, the problem in uh, forests and other activity related to biodiversity, climate change, and development are there in Sumatra and also in Kalimantan, Pak Governor. So we are really happy to announce that today soft launching basically of this foundation and this foundation is really hope to uh, synergize the development and uh, conservation at the same time but also uh, very important to notice that <clears throat> the participation of the private sector also the other stakeholders government is 